Hey, what's up? Pizza Loving Nerd here. Back in 2018, I looked at the Shell OS, and I'm going to be honest, that video is not my proudest work, as with most videos from 2018. Not only did my voice sound like a very high-pitched mouse, but also I didn't know how to cover software that was still in the development stages. And I said this about the Shell OS. So, about this system, it sucks. Victor Tran, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but you need to make a better distro. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Victor. Well, I think it's only fair that I take a look at the spiritual successor of the Shell OS, three years later, known as Cactus OS. This Linux distro is an art-based distro that uses the desk desktop environment, and it is definitely interesting, so let's get into it. Let's start with the experience factor. When you boot into the OS, you are presented with a custom-built installer for Arch. Partitioning is kind of broken right now, and so you kind of have to rely on auto-partitioning, and it can take up to two or three attempts to install. Only installed on my first try, like two out of the five times I've tested it. So if it doesn't work first try, that's not on you. Just hit that install button again, and it should work. After the installation, you get presented with the out-of-box experience. I really like this out-of-box experience. It reminds me of the one you get on GNOME when you use Dora. Matter of fact, I'm going to be comparing this UI to GNOME a lot. As for the distro itself, Cactus uses a custom DE called the Desk. This is a spiritual successor to the Shell desktop that I mentioned earlier, and I must say, the Desk kind of solves a lot of issues I had with the Shell. Like GNOME, its UI is very unique in terms of structure. You have a little mini bar on the top and when you hover towards it, it expands to be bigger and when it expands to be bigger, it gives you the menu button as well as all of your windows that are open. The menu is called the gateway and it's what you use to launch applications. My only wish for the gateway is that I could sort applications by category and not just by alphabetical order, but overall it does its job. Above the menu is a little clock indicator and clicking it brings you to a full screen overview with the time and your calendar. Then, on the left of that, there is going to be a sidebar, and that sidebar will let you navigate to your notifications, uh, network settings, and system settings. And I kind of like this, but I think it's a little bit hidden from the user, because you have to know that you have to click on the clock to access that. I feel like uh, the shell developer should make it a little bit more obvious the overview is there. Now let's talk about the app ecosystem. Now. This desktop has a bunch of exclusive apps made for it. I guess they're not exclusive because they do have Arch and Fedora repos. You can install them on Arch and Fedora. However, the point is they're made for Cactus and they're made for the desk desktop environment. And I really like these. These are all Qt apps and they all sort of share a similar design to each other that I like. Theme in general is just very nice for Qt apps. These apps seem to be inspired by GNOME's design, but the developers do it in a way where it doesn't feel like they just ripped off GNOME. Like, it still has its very own theme styling that is very unique to this distro, and even though, let's say, they have client-side decorations with view switchers at the top, it just feels executed in a way where it doesn't feel like they're ripping off GNOME. Other Qt apps do look fine on this, however, GTK apps just use Adweta, so they might want to make a GDK theme because I use a lot of GDK apps. Then again, not like GNOME themes QT. Once they make a GDK theme, in terms of design, this will be a very good experience for most people and maybe could even rival GNOME in the future if this project matures enough. Overall, I would highly recommend people to check out Cactus. It's not stable enough for a daily driver operating system, there are still some bugs here and there. However, this project has a lot of potential going forward, and I am very excited to see where this project goes. Anyways, thank you for watching, and thanks to patrons Mario Scripscard, Ethan Nostre, Jonathan Reynolds, Jim Peters, Sam Covet, and Mitchell Valentino. I just made an expensive purchase, and I'm working on an exclusive program for Patreon. Actually, it's going to be open source, but the packages are going to be on Patreon. Consider subscribing to me on Patreon. Anyways, see ya.